Good morning. Good morning, sir. So, one of the best things God's given us, I think, is the Bible. Now, why do you suppose God gave us the Bible? Have you been reading my notes <laughs> to help us with worship and to help us with faith, um, help us know how to live? Is it, is it for that? Um, so we can know who Micah's grandpa is. Um, well, it's in there, so we could look it up if we wanted to. Today's gospel lesson says there's one main reason, and it's the one you gave us. God gave us the Bible so that, so that we could come to believe, and through believing, we could get eternal life. Now, all those other things are a part of it. We learn how to live, and we learn the history, and it helps us worship. But God gave us these stories in the Bible so that we can have faith. Because when we hear these stories, when we read them or someone reads them to us, I'm not sure if when we watch them on movies, that one I'm still questioning. But when we hear God's word, we meet the risen Jesus in those stories. When we hear about how Jesus was raised from the dead or how he forgave someone, Jesus is really there. God gave us the Bible so we can, can experience the risen Christ so we can believe and so we can have eternal life. That's a pretty big deal, isn't it? God's good. Amen.
Our first reading today is taken from the fifth chapter of Acts. Peter has been arrested for proclaiming the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection. His response to the charges of the high priest summarizes the early church's proclamation of forgiveness of sin through repentance. When they had brought the apostles, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. Yet here you have fulfilled, you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you're determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The word of the Lord. God. Our psalm today is Psalm 118. It is printed in your bulletin. We will read responsibly. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteousness. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteousness may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, O Lord, save us. We pray to you, Lord, prosper our days. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, he has given us light. Form a procession with branches up to the corners of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Thanks to the Lord. The Lord is great. God's mercy endures forever. Our second reading is taken from the first chapter of Revelation. The book of Revelation recounts a mystical vision of the risen Christ experienced by a Christian prophet named John. Here he describes Christ as a timeless redeemer, the beginning, present, and end of all time. John to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will well. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. The unprecedented events of the day of resurrection continue as Jesus, the, as the risen Jesus, appears to his fearful disciples. A week later, after Thomas worships Jesus, Jesus pronounces the blessings of resurrection are also for those who have not seen and yet believe. 
the lesson begins. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. He really is risen, you know. Jesus is alive. That tomb was empty because, because Jesus had been raised from the dead. And he is. He's still alive. Jesus is still out there. Still out there doing God stuff. Saw an example of it. Well, I didn't see it, but I heard about an example of that Last Sunday, a little girl came to Kent Memorial for the Easter egg hunt. She is a particularly adorable little girl, which doesn't have anything to do with the story, but it's worth pointing out. She came to the Easter egg hunt, but unfortunately, she arrived after all of the eggs had been hunted and found. Now, the other children who had attended the Easter egg hunt, they could have looked at that little girl and thought to themselves, oh well, that's the way it goes. Should have got here earlier. I got mine. But that isn't what happened. Those wonderful young people, they took their own Easter eggs. And they went and hid them. And that little girl, she had Easter. She had a bit of peace, a bit of shalom. Indeed, she caught a glimpse, even if she didn't recognize it, of the risen Christ. I don't know if those young people know what happened that day, but Grandma did. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Now we know it too. On that Easter evening, 
the disciples still didn't get it. They were locked away up in that upper room, afraid that the fate that Jesus had faced would be their fate as well. They were locked in the upper room. And even though, even though Jesus had told them time and time again, on the third day, I'm going to rise from the dead. And even though the women had come and in great joy told them, Jesus is alive. We've seen him. Even though Peter and John had run to the tomb and John, it seems, maybe believed, but no one else did. They didn't believe. Then, then Jesus appeared among them. I've always wondered, how did that work? Was it Jesus all of a sudden just appeared, pop? Or was it more like Star Trek? He kind of materialized. Or, or did he, did he like a ghost kind of ooze through the door? John doesn't tell us, but, but Jesus showed up. There he was in the midst of them, and he said to them, Shalom. You know that's what he said. Peace be with you. He said, Shalom. And you might remember that that word shalom is a particularly important word. It doesn't just mean peace like no conflict or even peace like peacefulness. But that wish of shalom is the wish that God would give all of the good and wonderful things that God can give to us. That God would give that to the recipient of that Shalom. And Jesus appears in their midst and he says to them, Shalom. Peace be with you. And he shows them his hands and his sight. He shows them it's really him. And then he gives them that gift again. Peace be with you. Shalom. And then they believe. Faith comes from experiencing the risen Christ. And indeed, Jesus and John get it right. How much harder is it for us who can't see Jesus the way that the disciples did? We don't get that vision with our eyes. We can't touch his hands and hear his voice with our ears. And yet, yet we do. We come to faith in spite of all of the reasons why it seems unlikely, in spite of all the reasons why it seems irrational. We come to believe because we do. We experience that shalom of God. And in that peace, we experience Christ himself. Now, to be sure, we were we hear God's voice and experience Christ in God's word. That is what makes scripture holy. It is that we encounter Christ himself in stories about how God creates with just a word and in stories about how God set his people free from slavery in Egypt. And we hear and we encounter that risen Christ when we hear about that empty tomb and how those wonderful women heard the words of the angels and they believed. We also, of course, hear or encounter that risen Christ when we hear God's word. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That is what makes the sacraments sacraments, is that God promises to be there in a special and unique way. When we receive the body and the blood, we encounter the risen Christ alive and well, forgiving our sins and giving us life. 
we experience that risen Christ, when we experience that gift of shalom, whether it's to us or to a little girl coming for Easter egg hunts. Christ is alive. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And the evidence of his life is all around us. It is in that person who's wondering whether or not they are going to have enough food to eat to receive enough for today and maybe a few more days. And, and it is in that person who is looking for forgiveness and hears for the first time maybe in their lives that God truly does forgive them of their sins. We encounter that living Lord when, when someone gives a hug to a brother or sister who's hurting or calls someone that is lonely we encounter that risen Christ and those gifts of God's love and grace, that gift of shalom is received and experienced. And of course, it works both ways, doesn't it? For in our faith, as we believe that God is alive and living with us, even in the midst of some of the most horrible things, we can experience that peace. Knowing, knowing that he is there with us. I think that is indeed a great part of why God has called us together in this place. Called us together in congregations and churches. is So that we can share with one another all of those places where we have encountered the risen Christ. Where we can hear God's word and experience Christ in that and receive the sacraments and experience Christ in that and where we can tell the stories about the places where God has shown his love and his grace, where God has given us that peace, where we can hear about Easter egg hunts, forgiven sins, and the peace of the Lord. Indeed, I think that is a great part of why God calls us together, is so that we, we can give that peace to one another and to our world, so we can proclaim that he is risen, that he is risen indeed. Amen. Hearing God's call and responding in love, we share Jesus with all.